We just wrapped up media availability for BYU and UCF. The Cougs will take off to Florida on Thursday. Really interesting stuff from both coordinators. We heard from Jay Hill, from A-Rod, and then we had interviews that we'll have on extended pregame coverage Saturday starting at 9 a.m. Darius Lassiter, one of the heroes of the win against Oklahoma State. Fessy Satake breaking down that final drive and a lot more. What stood out to you today from practice, Mitch? You know, I, I thought what was a standout is this team is, is staying in the moment. They're focused. Uh, and I, I do feel like there's a kind of like a tangible vibe uh, about this group that there's still more to prove. Uh, you know, even though they're 7-0 and and they're number 11 in the country, this team still believes that they can be better. And I tend to agree. I think offense can definitely improve. Uh, even though they're the number one scoring def- or offense in the Big 12 games this year, Defense could definitely improve after the rush defense a week ago. And, and I think that was, it was not a, what did Jay Hill call it? It wasn't a reality check, but it was kind of like a notice, like, hey, you got to get better. And so there's a good vibe, I think, coming into this week for BYU. And, and you know, UCF is a, is a team that's capable of springing this upset. And maybe even they're the favorite. So we'll see how it all plays out. But I, I, like, I think the vibe's pretty good with this team. One thing that's kind of underrated about this year's team, Mitch, is that the health is pretty good. Obviously, you've got a a Connor Pay situation where sure. hopefully he's back for the rivalry game. Cody Epps uh, may be back for the Utah game as well. He's not going to play in this UCF game. But LJ is healthier than he's ever been. Hinkley Ropati, healthy. Uh, they hope to get C- Sione Imoa back. And then that receiver core, your your top receivers are healthy. Your tight end group is healthy. Your tackles are healthy. Like, in defensively, really healthy as well. Your defensive line is intact. Your linebackers are playing well. The safety room is plenty of depth. Jacob Robinson is upright. Like, this is a really healthy group. I think that's an underrated component to the success this year is the health of this team. Well, it was talked about a lot. I mean, the the sports scientists, as they pointed out, the strength and conditioning staff, they put a lot of resources and focus into that. And so far, it is paying off. I mean, last week, Sione Moa, the linebacker, Che Bryant Strother, Connor Pay, and Cody Epps, those were the only guys really that were out. So. BYU's got their key players, and at least what we expect. So we'll see, uh, you know, how that performs. And I think that you know UCF's a team that their offense—they've got a lot of talent, uh, a lot of athleticism. Jakari Brown, the quarterback, is going to be, you know, some post some challenges. But I just feel like if you can force him to run, uh, or force him to throw, throw excuse me, yeah. uh, I think BYU's going to be in a good spot. Whereas Alan Bowman, even though that shocked me, how he was able to have success on the ground. <laughs> right. Um, you, you, you don't threat fear the, the throw game with Jakari Brown, even though Gus Malzahn said this week he's got one of the best arms in college football. Got to be, I don't believe it yet because we haven't seen it yet in games, whereas R.J. Harvey is a stud at running back for UCF. they got to be able to stop the run. If BYU can do that, they're going to be in a good spot in this game. Yeah, it's all about the run defense. And, and specifically, I think, and I think Jay Hill alluded to this, because Ollie Gordon popped off early, it gave them confidence and it yes. kind of – embolden them to run the football stronger and it being harder to stop the run. That first quarter rush defense where you know they're going to run, you can shut that down. You know, it, it's certainly correctable. Jay Hill has noted several times now that Ollie Gordon long touchdown run in the first quarter, that was just an assignment error. They were not lined up. They were out of position. Boom. Long touchdown run. That first quarter is going to be key to, to shutting that down. Well, and I think you, you kind of have a team that's down and out right now. And UCF fans are unloading tickets. I mean, you go on the secondary market, BYU fans, you want to, you can gobble those things up and make My that. My brother-in-law a, just got some for 25 bucks. Right. So UCF fans are unloading. <laughs> and this could be, we know that Cougar fans, there's a strong uh, Cougar contingent down there in Florida. So this could be an opportunity. If you pounce on them early, UCF. Uh, BYU could, you know, win comfortably, potentially. Now, you never want to say comfortably in the Big 12 because any game uh, can go down to the wire. That's just what this league is. But I do think that setting the tone is going to be key in this game. It's always important, but I feel like it's it's it takes on greater significance for a team that's really questioning itself in UCF, who's coming in on a four-game losing streak. We'll be down there, myself, Mitch Harper for KSL Sports. We'll be wearing shorts and T-shirts. Yeah. Everyone back here might be wearing their <laughs> winter coats. That's right. With that cold spell coming, and we'll be having a good time along with all you BOU fans that are making the trip. We'll have you covered all the way on kslsports.com and, of course, extended pregame coverage coming your way on KSL News Radio at 9 a.m. So for Mitch Harper, I'm Matt Biamonte. We'll see you in Orlando.